Yo, what's going on, guys? Happy Sunday. Hopefully, you guys all had a great weekend. But I uh, just wanted to do a quick little weekly outlook video. I haven't done one of these in a long time. So, I figured it was due. And I apologize in advance if my voice sounds a little bit raspy. Got a little head cold over the weekend, but <clears throat> all is good and well. So, first and foremost, first thing we are going to take a look at is obviously the economic calendar. So, uh, looking ahead to this week, it is the last full week uh, of April, so last weekly candle that is uh, completely in the month of April, and we'll get into what that could look like here uh, on the charts here in just a second. But <clears throat> looking at Monday, we got no news Monday, so this is really the only day of the week that I am expecting price to have pretty slow, choppy action, uh, potentially seeking to destroy conditions. If you remember back to last week, Friday, we had a pretty big range as well. So, you know, big, big move Friday going into a no news Monday. Uh, I think that is just a couple different factors that would make for a pretty slow, choppy day. And this is going to be a day that I'm either not going to trade at all. And if I do take a trade, it'll be with lighter size um, or just looking to get an even you know pickier type of an entry where I can reduce my stop loss things like that but I am I am going into tomorrow with the expectation of not trading at all so we'll just see how that all kind of plays out and then obviously Tuesday we got flash manufacturing and flash services PMI uh, we got Wednesday just some medium impact stuff Thursday advanced GDP and unemployment so this should be a pretty big day I would think uh, these two uh, events together on Thursday pre-market and then obviously Friday we got some stuff as well uh, pre-market and then also 30 minutes after the open we've got some news as well so um, yeah that's really all that we have to keep an eye out for as far as the indices go and as far as the economic calendar goes yeah Monday is really the only day that I'm gonna be uh, probably sitting on the sidelines or just being extremely extremely picky but I am expecting to not take any trades on uh, on Monday. But now getting into some charts, let's start over here on dollar. So I have the the weekly chart pulled up. I guess we could jump up to the monthly um, as well. Like I said, this is the last weekly candle of this month. And as of right now, I've had these highs marked out here on DXY for the last couple of weeks and wanting to see price start expanding up on dollar to go aim for these highs here on the higher time frames that would be internal range of liquidity you know inside of this huge sibi so this huge sell side imbalance right up here nested got these equal high uh, relative equal highs nested in here uh, and that is really where i'm on the higher time frames expecting price to draw towards on dollar we can see that we have a buy side imbalance right here on the weekly chart so we can go ahead and start annotating some of this stuff uh, we got weekly fvg plus before dropping down to the daily time frame charts right away this is really what would catch my eye i would expect to see at the beginning part of the week or at least what this is what i'd prefer to see would be that price would pull down into this weekly inefficiency sweeping this previous weekly low mitigating some of this imbalance and then we begin our trek towards these relative equal highs as well as this weekly sell side imbalance but now dropping down again to the daily time frame chart we have this daily imbalance that was already mitigated and this was mitigated at the end of the week last week so during the later part of the week i was wanting to see dollar draw down into this daily fair value gap that we had left open from the beginning of the week and we finally did do that on Thursday. Price did come down and mitigate the daily imbalance and then kind of reject back up into the range. But we didn't displace. We didn't displace from here through the high, which to me tells me that we're not ready to go just yet. And I would expect price to pull back again, taking out that weekly candle low right here. And then again, filling that weekly imbalance and then making a push to the upside. So that would look like, obviously, if dollar does this in the beginning of the week, and then we do make this push towards those highs. I'm not saying that we will go to those highs this week or anything like that. I mean, that would be nice if we do get a big move like that. But just at least start drawing towards those levels. So if dollar were to do this, beginning of the week, retrace down, that would look like the indices obviously 
uh, retracing back up. And then obviously as dollar pushes to the upside, would expect indices to continue to sell off. Um, so that is really going to be all that I analyze for right now on dollar, just the higher time frames until we get more data. What I would say is one way for me to shift my bias, you got to think there's, there's so many PD arrays that would have to fail in order for this analysis to be incorrect. First and foremost, we'd have to see this daily imbalance end up getting inverted. And even if it does get inverted, we're still going to be inside of this weekly imbalance, you know, and then price would have to obviously disrespect this breaker. Price would have to then disrespect this daily imbalance right in here. Uh, and there's just a ton of things that are holding price up that I really wouldn't be shifting my bias at all until honestly, until price started like shifting below this swing low here. Um, or if we were to get in a short term swing low, inside of this inefficiency and then that were to get displaced through those would really be the only things that would make me shift my bias but until that happens this is going to be what i'm expecting to play out in the market on dollar and taking this analysis now into the indices we can start on nq and mark out a few things let's jump over here to the monthly time frame chart first so you guys can see that I already have the March high marked out and I deleted the March low because we've already traded far through the uh, the March low candle uh, wick and we've been just absolutely on a tear to the downside and most recently traded down into this weekly order block. So price came down at the end of the week last week into this weekly order block and actually closed inside of it. So, you know, taking what we analyzed on dollar right so what we expect on dollar is what this week we expect that price is likely to go down to then push higher so what we would expect on indices or at least this is what i'm expecting on indices would be that price would retrace up to have you know dollar sweep that weekly low and then when that starts displacing back up on dollar i would expect this to then start uh, continuing lower. So whether that means that we come to target on the weekly time frame chart, um, this order block low, or potentially even, let's jump up here in time frame again, there is a little monthly busy down in here as well. And this is one spot in the market on the monthly chart that does have my interest as a potential draw as we draw into this order block, as well as this inefficiency here, you also have a monthly volume imbalance kind of overlapping this as well. So these are just a couple areas that if we really do get really bearish, this would be where my eyes would go to next. And uh, that's where I would look to, you know, target low here, low here on uh, the higher time frame perspective, but continue to drop down here. Daily time frame chart. Well, uh, we won't go too far down in time frame, um, just like we didn't really do with dollar because we don't have enough data just yet. But anything could happen, obviously, from now until really Monday for me, I'm looking at it more so as a no trade day. So after Monday is over, we're obviously gonna have a lot more data to work with uh, and just see we do have a new week opening gap that did form here. Obviously now that the market is open, so we can just go ahead, mark that out for good measure for right now. New week opening gap right here, grab our little template, new week opening gap, bang, right there inside of this weekly order block. Um, and again, this is what I'm expecting price to start working the beginning part of this week up so then we can eventually continue lower. So we'll see what that ends up all looking like. Don't want to go much lower than the four hour time frame charts right now on NQ or these indices. So looking for potential areas where price could, you know, retrace into again, I think it's going to more so depend on dollar, right? So what I'm more interested in is what dollar does with that weekly low. Right, so I guess I can mark that out as well while we're here. This weekly low right here, this sell side liquidity level, previous weekly low, this is really what I'm what I'm focused on. So I'm not really trying to look at NQ and pick where on this chart I think we're going to, you know, retrace up to what liquidity level we're gonna take or anything like that. I'm not really as concerned about that as much as I am about this. And this to me is when we're gonna show that we're in an area where we're potentially ready to reverse. And that's really what I'm gonna be waiting for. So I'm not really looking for anything necessarily on this chart, but more, more likely than not, it will line up with something, right? Whether it's um, you know a previous day high or whatever the case might be, an imbalance that we could look to, right? Obviously, it'd be 
pretty fantastic if price could retrace, you know, take out this high, this high. Just It all depends, right? There's a big imbalance right here, obviously. So I don't know. I'm not trying to predict where this is going to go, which high it's going to go for, what liquidity level it's going to go for. All I know is that once dollar gets to where I'm expecting it to go, wherever this is, I'm expecting it to line up with some sort of a PD array, a liquidity level being taken, an imbalance being mitigated, something like that. And then, you know, expecting to see more sell side delivery. Um, so that's really all I have to go off of when it comes to the NQ time frame chart. You guys can see as well here on the weekly. This weekly imbalance did get inverted. Now it's, you know, obviously a pretty big imbalance and to see price pull up into here, there's still a lot of opportunity in here to do really all sorts of different things if you wanted to. But this is obviously now looking to be treated, in my opinion, as an inverse for value gap, right? So we came down on the weekly candle, closed below it strong. And now obviously this would be another PD array that you could kind of factor in as price pulls up into here, right? You, could, you have a low here from uh, Monday, the 29th of January, and then you have a low here from February 20th. These would be worth noting out, in my opinion having them just marked out and, you know, marking them out as, um, you know, February, I'll put Feb 20th low. And I'm going to put W just because I got this analysis from the weekly chart. And uh, this is what I'm going to put for that. And then here I'm going to do, what was this, January 29th. So I'm going to do January 29th low. Again, I'll put a W for uh, that low I found on the weekly chart. And I'm just going to keep these levels on here. And that way, when we do trade up into them, you know, if we scale back in here onto some smaller time frames, as price pulls up into these lows, right, you have on the higher time frame, these would actually act as your beginning of your breaker blocks, right? As price pulls up into them, they're the last low that took liquidity before each push higher. So that's why they're important. And then as you scale in here, it would make sense as the indices rise up into this inverse for value gap, you could see price sweep a level of liquidity, run into that low, and then see price start spooling back to the downside. So that's why it would make sense to kind of mark those out. Now, the only thing that as well you can mark out on a monthly chart, remember on NQ here, this monthly time frame, we've got this monthly imbalance down here that we're working with. There was no monthly imbalance right here. There was, however, a monthly imbalance on ES right here. And this is really the only thing in my analysis thus far that I think shows that, um, you know, a lot could happen yet because we don't know wicks do the damage bodies tell the story. So this monthly candle has yet to close. This monthly candle has yet to close. We are inside of a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency here on ES. So who knows, right? Like if, if my analysis is wrong and maybe dollar wants to sell off and the indices do want to keep going higher, well, guess what? That means that this monthly candle in this monthly fair value gap is going to look like perfect respect and price could just keep pushing from there. So that's really the only thing. Again, nothing in trading is 100%. I'm not sitting here trying to tell you guys what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. All I'm doing is just doing my analysis and giving you guys my opinions based on what I see uh, right now on the charts. So based on what I see on dollar, this is more so what I'm caring about and paying attention to. And then I'm bringing this analysis and pairing it up with whatever I'm doing on that trading day with the indices, right? Because if you look at NQ and you look at ES, depending on which one you look at at which time frame, you could end up with a slightly different bias or you're just sitting here playing a waiting game, waiting for something um, to be a little bit more concrete. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but this is really what I care about because sometimes these indices charts can say two different things at the same time. And sometimes that can be a little bit you know, confusing, but... Um, this is really what I've got my, my focus on, what I got my eyes on, you know, going into this week. One last thing on the smaller time frames here. This is the four hour chart before I let you guys go. You know, everything that would line up with uh, ESNQ and dollar, right? Doing what we expect to play out on DXY. I would love to see something like this. Um, and I just like to go through different scenarios, things I can anticipate um, playing out in the chart. And again, a lot can happen between now and the end of the day Monday. But what I would like to see happen would be something like this, right? Let's see, you know, ES maybe working up, sweeping these highs, mitigating this huge imbalance here on the four hour chart, maybe even tapping into this order block a little bit. And then that would set up this move. And what I would like to see, ideally, if I could have it my way, in a scenario such as this one, 
would be these highs right here if this were to form some SMT divergence with the same highs but on NQ, right? So like if ES were to get up there, sweep these highs right here, right? Same imbalance here on the four hour. And let's say ES were to come sweep that high, but then NQ, you know, didn't. Came did something like that. SMT divergence, higher or lower high here versus a higher high on ES. That would be also kind of that big indication that, okay, now price is probably getting ready on a hard time for him to shift to the downside. And those are just different little things that I would look for and start to anticipate. And again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not sitting here saying that this is exactly what's going to happen. This is just what I'm looking for as of right now. And by the end of the day, Monday, if we're in a completely different area on the chart, um, then I'll just reassess with the new data that I have to work with. But uh, yeah, guys, let me know if you have any questions. If you want and you're looking to get funded this week, feel free to click the Top Step link in the description. It will give you 20% off if you are a new customer to Top Step. But let me know if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns on this analysis. If you guys are looking at the same exact things as me or whatever you want to share, feel free to drop it in the comments below. But guys, I wish you good luck trading this week. Have fun, be safe, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.